All right, guys, we got to welcome you to uh, another episode of Burner Nates here. So this is number two in the series that we're filming with Rich Reiner here. And uh, it was part of leftover from what we filmed last year. But we kind of touched on it in the first episode as far as what kind of happened as far as your life and your health. And uh, we're happy to say you're back up in Wisconsin filming with us again this year. So very blessed to be uh, standing here today, right? Life short. That's right. So, if, I mean, we you guys can check out that uh, first episode with... A little bit more details, plus some a bunch of other information as far as muskies are concerned, and some unique baits is what that was about, basically. Or, uh, you well, know, like you said, oddball baits. It was oddball baits in the sense of that most muskie fishermen are not even aware that they're out there. Yep. You know, like I said before, after 40 years, I've had my, I've touched a lot of baits. I've seen baits come and go. Right. And these, those are viable tools that, you know, that a lot of muskie fishermen are not aware of. And hopefully if they're interested in that or if those baits will help them put a few more fish in the boat by using them, then we did good. Right, exactly. So yeah, we'll leave a link for that episode down in the uh, description. You guys can check that one out, get some more details on Rich and uh, some more musky information. But tonight we're going to go through some minnow baits. And uh, Jake and I have had some great success on minnow baits. Yeah. And uh, you cannot deny how effective they truly are. <laughs> They're tremendous. In a given year. And, you know, it obviously there's there's probably better times throughout the year that they work, but I think they shine all year round. Yeah. Oh, yes. And uh, we got plenty of baits to go through here, so why don't we jump into it, and uh, you can kick off what you want to start with. Well, what you said, that you know, you said a mouthful there. There's a lot of minnow baits on the market. So first of all, I want to apologize to any bait company or minnow bait company that I left out because I didn't do it intentionally. Yeah. What I can tell you is the baits that I have here are baits that I throw. But again, minnow baits are nothing more than tools. And I think the biggest, you know, you can't fish a minnow bait wrong, mm -hmm. especially the, one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, God, I mean, God bless. I love Bill and Sharon Crane, but they're not getting any younger. I mean, they're now in their 80s. None of us are. <laughs> and I've caught tremendous amount of fish on crane baits, but they're getting harder to come by. And you know what I'm saying. Am I not right? Great action. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're a good bait. Yeah. But they're, in, they're both in their 80s, and they're slowing down. Yeah. So I'm going to, what we're talking about here is, is the crane bait. And I think everybody knows what this is. Uh, Jake, I mean, you've, you know, you've put this thing to work. I know that you modify yours in a, in a couple different ways, right. but nevertheless, you know what? I want you to put this on right now and I want you to feel this in the water because I'm going to show you something here in a little bit. I want you to see what I'm talking about, okay? So if you want to take and put this in the water, just, just for, you know, Get some close ups here. Okay. So, the biggest factor I think with minnow baits is when people buy a minnow bait, the first thing that comes to their mind is twitch. And as I said before, you cannot fish a minnow bait wrong, you know, unless it's made for a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think last year, now you know what your crane bait feels like, right? Yep. So last year, when we were doing the filming, I gave you some of these. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. This is made by Big Guy Baits, yep. okay? Uh, they're down in southern Wisconsin. And what I failed, you know, and sometimes I think when, I'm, you know, you're talking to people, you expect everybody to know exactly what you're doing with that bait. Right. The fact of it is, the purpose that's a twitch bait. A crane bait is considered a twitch bait. Um, this is not a twitch bait. And that's, I think, the biggest factor with minnow baits. You need to know what your baits are doing. Yeah. When, when Babe Campbell, the owner of Big Guy Baits, made this, he didn't build this to make it for twitching. He built this for pulling. Yeah. And the reason he built this bait for the way he did is he's not a guy that's crazy about throwing jerk baits. It's just not his thing. So he wanted to build a minnow bait, okay, that basically he could pull. Now I will tell you this, we're going to bring this subject up, subject up again when we're talking about dive and rise, as people call them today, but we call them chop baits. But when you take and work a 7-inch shallow from big guy baits, basically, look it, 
this is what we're doing with it. We're using it just like a suic. We're taking, we're drawing it down long, drawing it short, drawing it long. See how it's wobbling back and forth? Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting a muskie to jump on this. Where we're at. Okay, but that's the key thing right now is you, when you cast this bait out, you're gonna use it like a pull bait, like a suic. Sure. You're gonna pull long, pull short, pull long, pull short. The second thing that he did with this bait is he made it to work over shallow structure because of where he fishes, he wanted a bait that would stay shallower. This bait stays 18 inches underneath water. How many times you've been in a situation where, say you're fishing a shallow flat and you've got vegetation coming up to a foot and a half, two feet underneath the water. Yeah. And so you're pulling on your twitch bait and what happens? You're, getting, get hung you're getting hung up, all guys do. With this bait, it's a tool, it doesn't get hung up. It stays right above the vegetation. And that's what the purpose of a big guy shallow minnow bait is. It's not going down, but what, 12, 18 inches, would you say? Even shallower than that. Yeah. But when you're in a, in a situation where you got a lot of vegetation, you got log jams, you know there's fish in there, that's where this bait comes in handy. Mm -hmm. And it's a slower twitch. It's a slower twitch. Or a slower yeah, I wobble, have to. I should say, you know. Yeah, I just you got to slow down with it. I mean, I you know when you put it out there. There's other minnow baits out there that'll twitch faster. Exactly. Their action. This is a slower. If you notice, wobble. I'm not putting really effort into this at all. I'm just mm -hmm. nice, easy pulls. Sometimes long, medium, short, and that's what I do with that bait. Yep. Okay, so. You can see it's got really good action, yeah. and you can feel it vibrating now. It's, it's definitely different than if you compare it to, say, like a crane or, you know, a slam or something like that. Right, and that's what I wanted to clarify. I, you know what, and that was my mistake. I should have told you that. It was never intended to be made as a twitch bait. Mm -hmm. It was made to be fished in shallow junk and logs. Sure. Okay, and stay up. Now, that being said, I'm going to let you do this because you're the... Here, let me try this one. This is Big Guy Bait's twitch bait. Okay. This is his twitch bait. And I had Jake throw the crane bait, not that he doesn't know what it feels like already, but now he's gonna see what this bait does. Yep. And this is, again, it's Big Guy's twitch bait. Okay. And again, I am not trying to, oh, you should all run out and buy a Big Guy bait. But the guy, does, he's a small batch manufacturer he works very hard at building a quality bait. At the time when we were doing this last year, he was still working on this. Mm. He just didn't want to release it, yep. okay, prematurely. Here, try this one. I'm old school. Now, tell me what you think of this. Again, the first, the, the first bait was a seven inch shallow, this is a seven inch twitch bait. Now, if you slow that bait down and you just start twitching it, it'll walk from side to side. What do you think? Yeah, you can definitely. See a difference now. Definitely. This, I think he's using white pine, if I'm not mistaken. It's the, it's the next lightest wood that's available, okay, besides balsa. Because again, it would have, this bait, you know, Babe wants to build a quality bait, but he also wants it to be an affordable bait. I think hangs really nice. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Good hang time. And that's because of the, of the wood he's using. That definitely runs different than the other one. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah, but it's sure getting does. down to what you're looking for, correct? Yeah. So, but so there's that difference in that. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, we are talking about, you know, you know, shallow running baits. And here again, here's another small bat batch manufacturer. This is a bait that's made by Ridgeway Customs. I'm gonna let you put that one on and you can have a ball with it. The unique thing about this bait is that really stands out is our guys that are trolling this bait. And 
doing very well with it. What this bait does is it's moving through the water. If you're trolling, it actually hunts. And what I mean by hunting is the bait's not making, it's not running a perfect line. It's kind of, it's, it's running to the left, it's running to the right, you know, as it, it's coming through the water when you're trolling it. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it stays, as you can see, shallower, okay? So the guys are loving this bait for trolling, but it, 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 it works well just even twitching or just ripping like he's doing right now. Yeah, what he's doing is I consider that ripping. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of action on the rod tip. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, again, the key thing here with baits is, you know, the bait, you know, did you do that back there? Yep. Okay. Yeah, she definitely moves some water. Yeah, that's the thing, when you can get your baits to move the water like that, I mean, it's throwing vibration out there for it. Exactly. So that, you know, that's, it's a key thing, but how many people have heard about these? Yeah, so, right. you know, I kind of classify this bait. I, I use this bait when, you know, I, you know, for, you know, pulling just like I'm using the big guy, but this one's a little bit deeper than a big guy. And, you know, it's got its place. Sure. Okay. Now on the other end of the spectrum, We're talking about twitching baits or ripping baits, but this kind of falls in the same category. This is a big game surface twitch. And the, the reason, the purpose of this bait was, years ago on the Chippewa Flowage, what we would do with this bait is we would take, when you're out, most guys, like I said, with minnow baits, you can't fish a minnow bait wrong. You can, you can twitch them, you can crank them steady, but we found this to be very deadly, especially on the chip. So let's say you've got a fish located in a given area, but you can't get the fish to go on, on a typical topwater bait. Notice how this bait is turning left to right, yeah. but it's staying right up underneath the surface. I'm waiting for something to blow up underneath. Yeah. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm slowing down so that you can get it on film. See, I was walking back and forth. Yep. When, a, when a bait fish are dying, this is exactly what they're doing. They're struggling to get down into the water column, but they're too weak. And this is basically what this emulates. Yep. And then, of course, you can crank it through. There's guys that are using it for slow trolling in the spring and are doing very well with this. Yep. And again, a lot of guys don't even like to talk about it because they want to keep it to themselves. But this has basically been an unsung hero. I usually get more aggressive with this bait. And I'll start really chugging it and making noise. Well, first of all, I'm using a rod I'm not used to, but I think you get the idea of the action this bait has yeah. coming through oh, the yeah. water. Sure. So basically what I've touched on is, yes, there are twitching baits, but there are some baits that work well pulling. There's some baits that are basically using similar to a walk the dog bait yep. or that are used on top. And basically if you go to the, you know, go to the Wisconsin Muskie Expo and you see this bait, you know, you say you see big game baits there. Yep. I mean, you just ask for a surface twitch and they're there or you can go to his site. Right. But you don't see these around in a lot of stores. Mm -hmm. But again, he keeps it, he's small batch, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna, the other baits I've got here, there's been a debate about wood versus plastic. And I will tell you this, years ago, we've used plenty of, of, of six inch grandmas and Jake's on the market, and they're made out of plastic. I've noticed some guys have the attitude if, if, it, if it's not wood, they don't want to use it. Mm -hmm. Trust me, whether it's plastic or wood, they catch fish. Mm -hmm. One of the plastic baits that we're using, where did that bait, oh, there it is. This is right up your alley. I'm gonna let you pull on this one, Jake. This is Big Game's version of a plastic minnow bait that he makes. 
as you can see, most of his plastic baits that he makes come with that finish, that 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 tinsel-like finish, you know, that prism metallic on. Metallic almost. Sure. I'm gonna tell you, I found on bright sunny days when you can't seem to get a fish to come up, they'll eat this prism stuff. Yeah. I mean, that thing stops dead. Uh -huh. It just hangs. Yeah, exactly. That's another factor. And on bright, you know, sunny days, they'll they'll come a long way sure. to come get that, you know, that prism bait. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, these run good. You like that? Yeah. I suppose you're going to keep that one too. <laughs> Huh? You know, I'd say the two baits that I use more of these days is probably the big guy baits and the big game baits. This is what I use most of the time. Yeah. Which, you know, and again, in, in, these are just other variations like here in the springtime. Here's a here's a big game, you know, for springtime, a little silver, a little silver shiner. Sure. You know, works well. Or in the case of, here's his wooden version of a five inch bait, okay? But again, wood, plastic, they both work. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of you utilizing the bait, you know, when you're out fishing. And again, unless the bait is made specifically for a, for a, a use, you know, that's what you need to know about minnow baits, okay? Sure. Yeah. Which a lot of people have noticed recently that the minnow baits Guys are using aluminum lips, so I'm going to let you put one of those on. Think about this, in the springtime or even in the fall when you want to slow down with the minnow bait, you know, a lot of guys are looking for baits that suspend. First of all, guys that are making minnow baits and, you know, and saying they suspend, and especially if they're made out of wood, it's almost hard to, you know, because you have no control over the, the wood. So in this case, um, these baits are made out of wood, but they're weighted and then they run an aluminum lip. One of the reasons I like an aluminum lip, the bait will, slink, it will, will sink slowly down and at some point in the, in the depths, it'll stop. It'll just kind of suspend. So if you're fishing in the fall time, in that case, a seven inch bait, you can stop, stop that bait dead in a, in a fish's tracks and a lot of times they'll just eat it. And I've had it happen numerous times. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, it hangs good. That's exactly what I'm looking for in cold water conditions. Yeah, you can fish it real slow. This is a six inch version of the big guy bait, the one that Jake is throwing. That's a seven inch version. When the fish are kind of in that transition or kind of touchy, that's where the seven, I, I favor the seven inch. Sure. KS Tackle also makes a bait very similar to that. This is Chaos Tackle's minnow bait and well made, you know, well built. You know, here's the thing about Chaos Tackle. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, Chaos Tackle, everybody knows Chaos Tackle for fishing rod, musky rods, and medusas. Fact of it is, Chaos Tackle makes a lot of baits oh, yeah. that people aren't even aware of. Right. And they're good quality products, but people aren't aware of it. Yeah, we, want, we run the rods, there's, but there's so many more. Yeah, there's a ton of baits you could mix in from them besides Medusa's. Well, exactly. So, you know, Chaos Tackle makes good baits all around baits. I mean, there's no right. doubt about that. So, what do you think of that, Jake? Yeah, you definitely have to slow down on it. Well, that's, that's the that's purpose the thing, you want yeah. to. You know, tough conditions, you're pulling on minnow baits. That's exactly the purpose of that. The bait is basically, one thing with a minnow bait, the bait will tell you what it wants to do. That's mm -hmm. true. You that's just gotta bait. you gotta be there to, to realize that. Yeah, that's a good, okay? very good point. That's where it really is. As far as not overworking it or you know what type of what type of action it actually has. Right. This one I love. And again, I know this sounds like a commercial and I'm not meaning to, you know, make it sound like a commercial, but this is the big guy nine inch. Yeah. Wait till you see this. This is the one bait I, I love the most. Wait till you see this thing in the water. Just move it nice and easy so they can, you can see this. Look at this bait. Look at the action on that thing. What do you think of that? Yeah, it's definitely a big, big profile yeah. wobble. Yeah. Yes, it's a big fish wobble. I mean, 
if you ever, a lot of people, you know, these younger musky fishermen have never seen wooden grandma baits. This reminds me of an of a old wooden grandma bait. I'm just bringing in steady. Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. That's just downright sexy. <laughs> you can see the wake it pushes oh. the water. Can you feel the? Can you feel the action on the bait? Yeah, it's it's slow, but yeah, it's yeah. definitely action. But you 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 can feel it. Yeah. So, and again, this is a big game nine inch version and again what I was talking about with that prism you know you have a bright sunny day in the fall time and you're not moving some fish check this out I mean both of these companies when you start looking at their minnow baits they're depending on the size they all have different actions so what do you think of that yeah, it's definitely deeper. Yes, it runs deeper, but a on a bright quicker. sunny day, yep. okay, you want a bait that's gonna run deeper. It's a it's a very similar run to the uh, seven the seven inch you had earlier. Yeah, it's right? actually these two baits, they besides run, just being bigger, they run very similar. Yeah. yeah. His two baits. They definitely do, but this one, like you said, runs deeper, fall period. You know, you want to get down deeper, bright sunny skies, fish are not moving. This seems, there's something about that prism finish that brings fish up. Well, so You can see even low light right now, which it's getting a little, as far as sunlight, you can still see that thing flashing under. Yeah, right, under the so, you know, that's, uh, I guess the key thing here with minnow baits is this. You can't fish a minnow bait wrong, but you need to understand you know what the minnow bait does in order to the action it's the action that it's going to have yeah. is it you know to suit the condition you're fishing at the time right yep okay agree so that's the key thing the other bait that i i brought another bait with me it's not really a minnow bait it's unlike anything but i i kind of this here is called a naze bait Yep, I've heard of that. Oh, you, you've, you've seen these? I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. Oh, this is a naze bait, okay? Now, it doesn't look anything like a minnow bait, but I want you to put this on. And again, this has got a tremendous, you know, it's got a, it's got a slow roll, it's got a tremendous action. It works well casting as well as trolling. You know, you know that's where it really excels. Again, it's not a minnow bait, but it catches for the for the amount of baits that are out there in the state of Wisconsin of, of, of the naze baits. They're catching a lot of fish. Sure. What do you think of that? It's like a little underwater armadillo. <laughs> it does. That's kind of funny. That's funny. <laughs> but no, it it's huh? definitely it has a different wobble to it. But it does. But sometimes. That on tough fun. days, it yeah. takes something different to get subtle. those fish to move. Yeah, it's, it's more definitely subtle. more subtle. Though. Yes. It's for for what it looks like, you wouldn't think it has minnow bait action, but it's a it's a it's it's got that minnow bait action, but it's it's more subtle than what we've just been working with. Well, that's exactly, and that's why I didn't. You know, where do you put that bait? Do you put it in the oddball category? But it's a bait that, you know, that is catching a lot of fish, and a lot of guys are not aware of. So, so anyways, those are, you know, that's an awful lot of minnow baits, but I think I'm, the one thing, if, if I done anything, I've made people realize that all minnow baits are not created equal. Yeah. They all have their time and place, right. whether you're fishing 12 inches down underwater because you're fishing a shallow vegetated flat, or you've got, you know, log jams, but you can't get your other baits in there because you're hooking the logs or you're grabbing vegetation, put on a seven inch big guy shallow. Mm -hmm. You can cover that water. But then if you're out on the edge in the channel, you can either put that crane bait or you can put his twitching bait or a big game on. Yeah. Bright sunny days, try the prism. It's, you know, they're all tools. They have their time or place. 
again, if it sounds like an advertisement, I don't mean that, but all these baits you will see, if, if my tackle box was sitting here right now in this boat, every one of these baits are in there. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. the object is to catch more muskies if you can when you're in you know, the limited time you got in the water. Yep. So. No, I think that was a, a good run through of some nice run of minnow baits that are effective and they just, they got great action. And again, so. there's other minnow baits on the market and yep. I don't want to offend anybody, but these are the baits that I use and I've done well with. Sure. So, so, so that concludes this one, right? Yeah. If, if, if this is where it's got to be, boom. All right. It's all good. Well, we got some great information there, so we got to thank you for that. And you mentioned a couple times the Wisconsin Muskie Expo. Yes, sir. So we should tell people if they haven't gone or they don't go, they should start going to that. It's always usually in March of March of the yes. year. Yes. So it's going to be the Wisconsin Muskie Expo is going to be uh, March 17th, 18th, and 19th. You guys have gone. You've got to meet a lot of people there. Love it. But yeah. the, the key thing is here in most muskie shows, I mean, I mean, even at the Wisconsin Muskie Expo, the big companies, Chaos Tackle, Suic, all those companies are there. Yep. But as you well know, we've got a lot of small batch manufacturers on that floor that you don't normally see in a lot of other shows. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I definitely, we definitely enjoyed it. And years before we even had a booth there, I was always going because it gets you amped up for the next season. And sure. There's plenty to spend money on and buy, buy new baits and, and look and, and just talk with people too as far as musky fishing. Well, so. all these companies, you can either go on their site or go to the Wisconsin Musky Expo because yeah. they're there. Good hands on experience and we've enjoyed it. So something for you guys to keep in mind in the spring of the year. But yeah, I think we'll wrap it up here and we'll move on to the next one. Next one is going to be. We're going to, tonight, I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to do, as the people today call it, dive and rise. But we're going to, you know, you got to realize 30, 40 years ago, we called them chop baits. Sure. Yep. And I think once you see the way we're working those baits, you'll understand why we call them chop baits. Yeah, we'll go through them in the next episode, guys. So stay tuned for that. But that is it for this one. we got to thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.